In this edition of Hollywood's Trail Tips, we'll cover the topic of how to properly flood a motorcycle. Water crossings are a fact of life for the off-road rider, and we've shown on numerous occasions how to get the job done. But in this edition, we'll get a little more extreme and show you how to properly flood a motorcycle. First, let's pick a destination. How about Alaska? And then, let's make it January. Then mix in a few billion metric tons of ice. And just to make things a little more interesting, let's not drop in this guy. Let's drop in this guy. Then, determine the limits of cell phone coverage and ensure that you ride beyond them. All right now, let's get started. It's got a little bit of a... a problem. Thanks for pointing out the obvious, Hollywood. The big wheel is hanging by its front wheel on an ice shelf in a lake at the terminal moraine of a 30 mile long glacier. First thing is step one. Determine if the motorcycle is worth salvaging. In this instance, for academic purposes, we'll say yes. The bike got pulled back on top of the ice, submerging Hollywood but allowing us to move on to step number two. Evaluate your resources. Emptying out the tool bag revealed nothing useful except for some duct tape and a Leatherman. More importantly, there was no beer or cigarettes. The big wheel needed to be started. So we moved on immediately to step number three. Drain the exhaust. Oh my god. That brings us to Hollywood's helpful hint. Take turns holding the bike up. When it's the drowner's turn, that's your opportunity to get on the running bike and leave. In this case, Hollywood had the keys to the truck in his pocket, so we moved on to step four. Drain the air box. Step five is similar to step four. Drain the carb float bowl. Since we left the spark plug wrench back on the workbench at home, we skipped step six and moved directly on to step seven. Step number eight. You've got nothing to lose here, so give it all you got. In the end, internal combustion was achieved, and everyone went home happy. Hollywood was glad that he didn't have to walk home in motocross boots. I was glad that I didn't have to ride home for two hours with a hypothermic guy in the back wanting a spoon. And that's how to properly flood a motorcycle.